In this tutorial we'll cover the Slice and Dice tools which are located in the Modify suite of icons. These are more properly named Surface Split, Slice and Line of Intersections. These are used to cut any type of object including lines, solids and surfaces. We'll also take a brief look at the Stitch and Unstitch tools which lets you sew surfaces together or separate surfaces from an object. We'll begin by looking at the Surface Split tool first. Before we use it, of course, we need a couple objects that we need to split. So let's start off by creating a primitive cone. We'll choose the truncated cone option. Click once for the center, once for the radius, and then a third time for the height. And then I'll click one more time to give it the truncated percentage on top. I'll use the show controls to reshape that. And I'll click on the closure icon to make it none, to make it a surface object. Let's do one more thing. Let's take that surface and rotate it so that the curved portion is towards the front of our scene. The second object that I'm going to create will be a solid object. Choose the rectangle drawing tool, 3D extrude icon, and then I'll just simply create a 2D rectangle that I can pull up into a 3D solid object. Now let's split the object using the surface split tool. Look in the tool options palette and leave it at the default of a one-way split. It's important which object you pick first. That's the object that will be split. Let's pick the box first. And then we'll click the surface second. And the box is split by that surface. Undo. And let's try it again clicking in the opposite order. Click on the surface first and then the box second. And now the surface is split by the box. Undo. And let's change the options. Let's make it a two-way split. Then you can select the objects in any order because it will split both objects from each other. Now let's take a brief look at the Stitch and Unstitch tools. First we'll use the Delete tool to delete a couple of these extra split surfaces. I'm going to move this object a little closer and then take this split surface and move it to the end of the other object. These are two separate surfaces at this point. We'll use the Stitch tool to stitch those together to form one single solid object. And then using the Unstitch tool, you click on any face of any object and it'll separate it from that object. The next tool we'll look at is the Slice tool, which slices an object with a 2D line. Let's try this by starting off with a rectangular box. Extrude that to the height that we want. And then I'll need to draw a line to slice through that object. We use the Define Reference Plane tool, click on the front face of the object, and we'll draw on that plane. Let's use the Vector Line tool, draw it as a 2D vector line and not insert it into the object. Let's switch from the Vector Line to perhaps an arc, and then switch back to the Vector Line tool again, and extend it outside the boundaries of that face. And there's our trimming line. Let's select the Slice tool. And click on the object, click on our line, and the line will cut through the object perpendicular to the plane. If I were to move the resulting objects, you'll see that that single object has been sliced into two pieces. Let's undo a couple steps and look at the options for the slice tool. Let's turn the heel option off. Click on the object in the line, and move the resultant objects again, and you'll see that without the heel option turned on, it does not add that extra face to keep that a solid object. Let's go ahead and leave it the way it is. Let's use the delete tool and delete our line in the top half and maybe hold down the command can Mac or control can windows to delete just that bottom face. And there's a surface shell of a building. To give it some thickness, we can use the thicken tool, click on the object, and that surface is then converted into a solid object of uniform thickness. Let's say we want to taper this building so that, so that the roof sort of slopes down towards the back of the building. Well, we'll use our Define Reference Plane tool again, click on the side face, and then we'll draw a 2D line on that side face. Let's use the Vector Line tool again, and maybe extend that up, and there's our trimming line. Once again, we'll go to the Slice tool, and we're going to turn the Heal option on. So when the line cuts through, it'll heal that solid geometry uh, with a face to keep it as a solid object. The next tool we'll look at is the Line of Intersection tool. This derives the line of intersection between any two objects. For example, let's create a cylinder, and we'll generate a sphere, 
and we select the line of intersection tool, click on the two objects in any order, and now we have a line which represents a path that is the intersection of where those two objects meet. And this line is just like any other line that can be used for subsequent operations. We'll conclude this video with a vaulted ceiling created using the Surface Split tool. We begin by turning the grid snap on, and then we'll create some walls by using the 2D Rectangle tool with a 3D wall icon, and draw a rectangular shape and extrude it for the walls. Now for the vaulted ceiling, what we'll do is uh, create half of it by using the Spline Drawing tool, 3D Extrude icon without the Insert option turned on, Right click in the side face and choose Lock Reference Plane. We click at the endpoint, press Shift plus space bar in the middle to create a temporary guide, and click again along that guide. And now we double click at the endpoint and extrude by snapping and clicking at the end of the other side of the wall. Right click to turn off the Lock Reference Plane, and then right click again on the side face to turn it back on so it's locked on that face. Let's go back to the spline drawing tool again. We click on the end, press and release the shift plus base bar at the midpoint, and then we hold the shift key to lock it along that guide and snap and click right at the end point of the other arch. And now we double click at the end of the wall and click again by snapping to the end point on the opposite end of the wall to create the second arch. These are two surfaces. Uh, we can extend them a little bit uh, to create the overhang by moving the segments of the arches. Simply uh, move by holding the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and moving just the segment of that surface. And now we're ready to split the two objects. Let's use our Surface Split tool, select the two-way split option, and click on both of the arch surfaces. And then we delete the parts of the split surfaces that we don't need. So let's delete the bottom surfaces and then we'll take the remaining surfaces that make up our vaulted ceiling and we will use the stitch tool to stitch those all together to form one single surface object. We'll need to make a copy of this so we'll select the pick tool and we'll do the command C on Mac or control C on Windows to copy that to the clipboard. Using the reshape tool we'll reshape the top of the wall so they extend through the vaulted surface. And then using the Surface Split tool again between the solid walls and our surface object, we end up with the resulting split surfaces. And if I move those away from each other, we can see we have many additional surfaces that we don't need. So let's use the Delete tool, and we will delete whatever surfaces we don't need. We'll keep the bottom two. I'll move this surface on top of the walls again. And then using the stitch tool, we'll stitch those pieces back together uh, to make it a solid wall. And optional steps uh, to get rid of those segments would be to use the unmesh tool, click on the object to get rid of those additional edges. Now we paste our surface back in. And in order to give it some thickness, we can use the thicken tool. Click on your surface object, and we can create a solid object of uniform thickness. And there's our vaulted ceiling derived to match perfectly with our walls. And this concludes Slice and Dice tutorial.